thankful. If everybody could share this podcast, because I really think this needs to go to the world. So if you could, if you're watching on Facebook or if you have it on Facebook, do that. If it's on YouTube, copy the link, send it out to people to watch. And not that I get any glory, but that the kingdom would be increased and that people would be encouraged. We have so many people still watching online, so many people that you know, don't feel safe in a crowd where there's not that many people wearing masks. And I understand it, and we love them. They're still connected to our hearts. They're dear family that we love and we appreciate. And I just ask everybody, share this to somebody so that somebody else can receive. That's what the gospel is all about, right? Us sharing our faith. And so when you hit the little share button, you're sharing it to everybody that's on your channel. And I just encourage you to do that or copy it on YouTube. John chapter 7. We're going to start at John chapter 7, verse 37. Always blessed to have my pastor and his wife here, Pastor Lewis and Tina. I love you guys, and thank you so much for your commitment to Bobby and I. We love you and have learned so much from you. You're amazing. John 7, 37, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out. Man, I just read that this morning. It just touched my heart. Jesus stood out crying, and he's saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And then they explain, he said, this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those who believed in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. In the King James Version, verse 39 says this, but he spake this, he, but he spake, um, but this he, this he, this he of the Spirit which they that believed on him would receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. I titled the message Holy Ghost. Because when I was a kid, that's what it was. It was the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost and fire. Everybody say, Holy Ghost. That's the way they said it, Holy Ghost. (laughs) I want to talk to us about the Holy Ghost, and I want to just help you to understand the world's view of the Holy Ghost is that we're all a bunch of weirdos. If you tell somebody, yeah, I go to a Holy Ghost church, they're already got a picture in their mind of you rolling on the floor, holy roller, screamer, shouter, bucker, runner. I mean, that's their picture of of, of what we are in the Holy Ghost. And I understand that because I grew up in that atmosphere. I grew up in a little Pentecostal holiness church, and I actually remember, I remember praying that the Holy Ghost would not show up at church. I literally prayed, God, don't let the Holy Ghost show up in here, because when the Holy Spirit showed up, it was bucking. It was like their heads would do this, like it was a chicken eating corn, like really fast. And, and, and bobby pins would fly, you know, the ladies had their hair up in a bun, and you're like ducking down under a seat, you know, and it, it, it used to get crazy. I remember times when they'd just take off running and bust open the front doors, and everybody be running outside, and I'm sitting there going, Oh, my goodness, my friends are going to think I'm crazy. I used to think, you know, I used to bring my friends to church and pray, Lord, don't let the Holy Ghost show up. And every time, you know what would happen, right? It'd get just crazy in there. And I would be just sitting there just cringing like, oh, man. And every time at the end of the service, my friends would be up at the altar like crying, like, God, I want this, I want this. Because it's just that, it, it's contagious. It's just contagious. And and I I just know that there should be an indwelling and an outflowing of the Holy Spirit in our lives on a regular basis. Every day, there should be an inflowing of the Holy Spirit, an infilling of the Holy Spirit, and an outflowing of the Holy Spirit in your life every day. And in the church, you know, the Holy Spirit is one of the most neglected people in the church. It's, it's like most churches never talk about him, never, ne- never mention him, never say anything about him. You know how weird it would be if Bobby and I woke up to, in the morning and got in our car and had to go to East Naples, and if we got in the car and we drove all the way across town to East Naples and never said anything to each other? Like, wouldn't you think that was weird, Derek, if I said, this is my nephew, Derek, he just moved to Naples, Florida, he's going to be living here. But wouldn't it be weird, Derek, if I got you in the car and said, hey, go with Bobby and I, we're going to go to East Naples, we're going downtown Naples and want you to ride with us. And when you got in the car and her and I never said a word to each other, it'd be strange, right? But how often do we as the church 
the Holy Spirit's in our lives, in our cars, and we never speak to him. Never talk to him. Never engage in a conversation with him. When you look at the, at the New Testament, and we're in the book of Acts right now in our SOAP, and if you're not reading with us, I just encourage you. It's a, a daily reading plan called SOAP, Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And this month, we're in the book of Acts, and we're in Acts chapter 7 about Stephen today. And it's just so amazing just reading that this morning before I came to church about Stephen and how he stood and preached the entire Bible. <laughs> From all the way through, I'm like, just join us in reading. But we're reading the book of Acts. And when you read the book of Acts, what you find in the book of Acts was there was this relationship with the Holy Spirit. There was this communion. They knew his voice, Roger. They, 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 they knew him. They, they could distinguish between him and an angel. An angel would speak, and they would say, an angel spoke to me. Or the Holy Spirit would speak, and they would say, the Holy Spirit said... How does that happen? It's through communion with the Holy Spirit. It's knowing him, building a relationship with him. And, and most of the church isn't there. We're not disrespectful. We're not denying Holy Spirit, but we're not engaging in Holy Spirit. I could call my wife's cell phone, and if Riley picks up the phone and answers the phone, I know it's not Bobby. I can say, hey, what are you doing? Where's Bobby? How do you know it's not me? How did you know I wasn't Bobby? I, I just know because 33 years of marriage and dating for seven years, I know her voice. And, and, and for some of us, we're not spending enough time with the Holy Spirit. We don't understand Holy Spirit. And so we're just kind of existing with him. And I'm telling you, everything changes when you have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Most of you left somewhere else to come here because you, when you came in, you realized the Holy Spirit's in this house. It isn't about me and my personality. It isn't about my ability to communicate the word. It's about the Holy Spirit in me coming through and speaking into your lives. And I'm telling you, this is what's got to happen to the church. This isn't about a Sunday gathering. It's about you and I being filled with the gospel, having an infilling and an outflowing of the Holy Spirit. If I, if I could show you, because I, I think sometimes like we, we can't even understand what, what, what's going on. Listen, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, Christ came into your life and filled your life, washed out all the impurities, cleansed you. He filled your life. It wasn't just giving him your heart. That's the beginning place. This morning in the first service, a lady in the back lifted her hand for salvation. And, and, and I, I was just so excited, even if it was just one, because I know that it, that, that's the beginning place, but that's not the end of it, the game. That's, not where, that's just where it starts. You come in and you say, Jesus, I give you my life. Some say, give him your heart. It's not your heart. He wants to fill your life. And when you get salvation in your life, God fills your life to the full. This, this becomes your life. You're full, but that's not the end of it. That's not the end of it. That's the beginning of it. Your life gets filled with Christ. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know what happens? You get submerged into God. When you give your life to Christ, he fills your life. But when you get in the Holy Spirit, when you acknowledge him, when you walk with him, when you live with him, and you think every day, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? Holy Spirit, I love you, and I thank you. And you're in this constant communion, fellowship, koinia, that you and him are walking hand in hand. And I'm telling you, me included, we're not giving him enough attention. You know that Riley, we just adopted her into our family, and when I brought her up here, she was glowing. She was glowing. She was here in first service. She had to leave for second service, but I said, be there so I can introduce you as Riley Ball. But when I gave attention to her, you know what was happening? Her love tank was filling up and overflowing. Why? Because I acknowledged her. Because I stood her before you guys and said, here is now Riley Ball. She's not Riley Hammerstone anymore. She's Riley Ball, and her heart was just overflowing. If you could realize this with the Holy Spirit, when you acknowledge him, when you wake up in the morning and you acknowledge him, Holy Spirit, I'm so glad you're with me today. I'm so glad that we're going to do something today. I'm so glad that you're walking with me. I want to have coffee with you today. Would you sit with me at the table and let me just talk with you for a few minutes and listen to you for a few minutes? It changes everything. It's the inflow and the outflow of the Holy Spirit. This is what we're called to as believers. You're not called just to come to a church on a Sunday morning. 
I'm so thankful you're here, and I'm so thankful you're watching online. But I'm telling you, there is so much more for us. John, 12, uh, John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do. Because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. That he, that he, that he is the Holy Spirit. It's not an it. He's not talking about an it. He's talking about the person of the Holy Spirit, the one who wants to wake up every day in your room, the one who wants to drive with you to work, the one that wants to empower you in the workplace, the one that wants to show you things and signs and wonders and miracles and release the glory through you as an outflow of that love. The Holy Spirit is mentioned over 800 times in the Scripture. The word spirit in the Old Testament is the Hebrew word Ruach, R-U-A-C-H, Ruach, and it means wind, breath, a violent exaltation, a blast of breath. This is how they describe, this is how the Spirit was described. This wind, this violent wind, this breath, this, this power. In the New Testament, the Greek word is used and is translated as Spirit is the word pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma, and it means a wind, a current, a, 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 a current of air, a blast of gentle breath. You understand these descriptions of, of what the Holy Spirit is to do in our lives. Why do we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit if we've got Jesus in our lives? Jesus says, yes, this is good that I'm in your life. This gets you to heaven. But if you want to walk out life on the earth, you need to be in Empowered, submerged in the Holy Spirit because he is the power that leads us into victory. There should be an indwelling and an outflowing of the Holy Spirit in every believer every day. Jesus made us a promise that the Holy Spirit would not only be with you, he would be in you. That he would be with you and in you. The Holy Spirit is the power through which we come to know Christ. You don't get saved when you want to. That's a lie. There has to be a drawing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself begins to draw you. He begins to speak to you. He begins to convict you. He begins to show you your life and to reveal to you where you're at in life. And he begins to draw you. The Holy Spirit draws you. And that's how you come to know Christ. You cannot understand the word of God without the, without the Holy Spirit revealing it to you. I can preach it to you. I can tell it to you. It, I can reveal to you the logos, the written word of God. I can show you scriptures. I can read them to you. You can read them for yourself. It's the logos. But it has to move from logos to rhema. It has to, remove, it has to move into a spiritual realm where God reveals the scripture to you, and then it begins to impact and change your life. This is where so many believers are. They're just listening to the logos. They're trying to get the logos. And I'm telling you, until you get submerged in God, you're never going to know Jesus. You're, gonna never, you're not going to know you. And you're not going to understand his word. But when you're submerged in God, the Holy Spirit comes alongside you. And he begins to reveal his truth to you and transforms your life. Look at 2 Corinthians 2.9, and we look at this on the miracle basis. The, man, there's so much more God's going to do for my life. But listen to it. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.9, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. That's what we gravitate to is this big supernatural thing. There's so much more, and that's wonderful. But look at it. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. There is a need to be baptized, submerged in the Holy Spirit, so that God can begin to show you so much more than you already know. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus describes him as the helper. 
In John 14, verse 16, now pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive him, because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he, you see where he says, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit is a person. He has a mind. He has a will. He has emotion. He has feelings. And most of us don't know him that way. We see him as a spiritual force up in the sky or something. That It's the spirit realm, like the ghost side, that we can't have this relationship with. And I'm here to tell you, that's not a good, that's not a good perception of who he is. He is a person that is on the earth to fill your life. He's a person, mind, will, emotions. He has a voice. And he's a person. John 14, 6. I'll pray the Father. He'll give you another helper that he, not an it, not a thing. It's a person that we receive into our lives and we give him access to everything. He's a, he has a mind. Romans 8, 27. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is. The mind of the Spirit. He has a mind. He has a will. 2 Corinthians 2.11. But the same Spirit works in all these things. Talking about the gifts of the Spirit. He works in all these things. Uh, distributing to each one as he what? As he wills. He, the, Paul's teaching us in 2 Corinthians 12 about the gifts of the Spirit. And he says, listen, the will of the Father is to give you the gifts of the Spirit. And as he wills, as it's his will, he begins to give you gifts that you can operate in. He has emotions. Ephesians 4.30 says this, do not, be, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit. Listen, I'm not once in grace, always in grace. Okay, I'm not, no, no, not that, say that wrong. I'm not once saved, always saved. Okay, but I'm close. I'm really close. I'm not up there thinking every time I mess up, God's erasing me and I'm out of there. I think I'm sealed by the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm walking with the Lord. And I'm not afraid of myself that I'm going to lose my salvation. No, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Do I think people can turn their backs on God and walk away? I do believe that, and I have seen that through my life. But I also know the hound of heaven is going to track you down and keep wooing you back to the grace of God, back to the love of God. And I believe in the, the, that I'm sealed until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit speaks, 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit expressively what? Says. He speaks that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and uh, demons of doc uh, doctrines of demons. The Holy Spirit is God on the earth right now. The Holy Spirit is the God of the now. Everything that's happening on the earth right now is because the Holy Spirit is activating God's word. Everything that we see, miracles, signs and wonders, people getting healed, delivered, baptized, that's a work of the Holy Spirit on the earth right now. Jesus is, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. He's there, but the Holy Spirit is here, and he's saying, let me in and let me consume you with my love. Everything that God is doing right now on the earth is being done by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is who activates the word. You go back to the very beginning in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the earth. And the Holy Spirit was hovering. What was he doing? He was hovering, waiting on the word to be spoken. And when God spoke the word, the Holy Spirit activated that word and brought it to pass. This is what you and I got to realize in our lives. The word is being spoken over you. You've got promises being spoken over you. You've got, you've, got, you've got prophecies over your life. And the Holy Spirit is hovering over you, waiting on you to activate him and say, God, now bring it to pass. The Holy Spirit is always confirming the word of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. The Holy Spirit is always pointing You'll never find anywhere the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit in the Bible is pointing to himself. He doesn't do it, Paul. He's pointing to Jesus. 
Because this is all about Jesus. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to always point you to Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the hurting people. Jesus is the answer for the drug addict. Jesus is the answer for those that are living in fear. He is the answer. And the Holy Spirit says, let me submerge you in my love so I can point you to Jesus. I'm going to give you 12 attributes and characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And when you begin to study the Bible, you're going to see these things jumping out at you. It's just going to continue. The personal qualities of the Holy Spirit are going to emerge all through the Bible. And the first one is this. Number one, the Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit convicts. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. You think about that. Jesus, the son of the living God, walking on the earth with with his disciples, looks at those 12 disciples and said, look, it's to your advantage that I go. I'm going to give you an advantage over the devil. I'm going to give you an advantage over the lies of the enemy. I'm going away, and I'm going to send the helper. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Before you get saved, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you. But let me just tell you something. After you get saved, it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you. Stop holding on to your sin. Stop trying to justify a lifestyle. Stop stop trying to justify. Let the Holy Spirit begin to reveal to you everything that needs to change in your life. Listen to me, I've been saved a long time, and I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is still yet working on me, and there are things that I allow into my life that he reveals to me by being submerged in him that say, you got to let that go. I love it. In the first service, uh, Joy Bonnard had, a, had a, a mug made. It's a big old water bottle like this, and it says, others may, I may not. And I was like, oh, I just love it because that's how I live. I'm not comparing myself to Jonathan. I'm not comparing myself to my pastor. I'm not comparing myself to Pastor Mark. These are all great men and women of God. I'm comparing myself to Jesus, and God is always revealing to me, others may, I may not. I can't walk his walk. He can't walk my walk. I got to let the Holy Spirit convict me of anything that doesn't belong in my life. This is, so, this is such a truth that we've got to get because we've got to advance beyond where we're at. We can't stay at this level. You can't come into the kingdom of God and let him fill your life and not submerge it in the Holy Spirit. That's the only way to know real righteousness. That I'm not saved by works, that I'm not saved according to my own abilities. When the Holy Spirit begins to convict me, it's him showing me what's right and wrong. Not somebody up on a platform like me telling you what you need to stop doing. You need to go to the Holy Spirit and say, begin to show me in your word what needs to go in my life and hold everything in your life loosely. All your traditions, all your habits, and all your things that you think, oh, this ain't so bad. This ain't so bad. I mean, I'm not, I'm not as bad as Mark. Mark, I've heard him say a few words. That I don't know. No, you can't compare yourself to Mark. You can't consider, I can't compare myself to Pastor Jason. I'm going to stand before God, and he's going to look at me and say, enter in good and faithful or depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity. How do I know what's a work of iniquity? It's the Holy Spirit that convicts. Number two, the Holy Spirit indwells. 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Number three, the Holy Spirit adopts. He adopts. Just like I did with Riley this week on Tuesday. Romans 8, 14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by where we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, we will be glorified with him together. Listen, when we adopted a Riley, it was on a Zoom call. But that judge stood on that, on that Zoom call and looked me in the eyes. He said, Mr. Ball, do you understand? When you adopt Riley into your family, she now becomes an heir of everything that you have. 
All the inheritance that you have for your other children now is split with Riley. She's an heir to everything you have. My mind went spiritually immediately to God, telling me that I'm an heir of Christ, that I've been adopted into a royal family. I have golden streets. I have, I have jasper walls. I, I have a kingdom that God has brought me into that is not of this world. I've been adopted into a royal family. I've been brought in, and everything that he has is now mine. He didn't adopt me and say, okay, now, now, I'm adopted. I didn't look at Riley and say, okay, Riley, you're adopted in, but you got to leave all your baggage back. I didn't look at her and say, Riley, you got to leave the hurt and pain of your father dying last Christmas. You got to leave the the pain of addiction because of the addiction he was in. You got to leave all that behind. No, I said, Riley, you come into the family. You can bring your hurts. You can bring your pain, all the baggage, all the luggage. You're part of this family. We're going to give you the word of the Lord. We're going to transform your life. You're going to be a woman of God, walk in integrity and power of the Holy Spirit. Bring it all because you're now a part of the family. We've been adopted. The Holy Spirit seals us. Ephesians 1, 13. In him you also trusted after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you have, been, you have believed, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. We're sealed. The Holy Spirit gives us the assurance of our salvation. If you're starting to question yourself, if you're starting to feel like a failure, if the enemy's throwing all your weaknesses up at you and wanting you to focus on what you're not, why well, you're not this, and you should be there already, all you got to do is get with the Holy Spirit because he's going to assure you that you are sealed, that you are covered, that he's walking with you. And though you may not be perfect yet, you're on a path to freedom. You're on a, you're on a straight and a narrow way that's leading you to the place of righteousness in Christ. We have the security. Number five, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. When you begin to look at this and you realize the Holy Spirit has a role for you in the body of Christ. Roger hasn't been with us a year yet. I don't know how many months it's been, but it's getting close. About 10 months. But when God brought you to this church, he gave you gifts and already empowered you to use your gifts. When you guys came as a couple here just a few months ago, God already had a place already assigned for you. there's, There's ministry calling waiting for you. God already has a place for you in this body, in this body. You're not here by accident. You think, well, we just are looking for a new church and thought we'd try you out. No, Fritz, God sent you here because you have an assignment here that he gives you. There is a call of God over your life. And God said, when you get engaged in the Holy Spirit, I'm going to move you into your calling, and I'm going to release you to the body of Christ, into this world. You have a role in the body of Christ. Others will benefit from who you are. You're important and significant. Number six, the Holy Spirit commissions us. In Acts 13 and verse 2, and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, there's that voice, now separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them, and they sent them away. And so being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they went to Cyrus. They sailed to Cyrus. It was a commissioning. When we begin to understand the work of the Holy Spirit that filled life with Christ, and it's submerged into the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a commissioning to say, now I want you to activate your faith and step out into what I've called you to do. Some of you are just searching, like, what's my calling? What's my calling? Get dunked in the Holy Ghost. Get dunked in the Spirit of God and say, God, I'm just a vessel. I'm just an empty vessel. Everything's loose. You tell me to get rid of something that's gone. You tell me to embrace something, I embrace it. I'm walking with you every day. He commissions us. Number seven, the Holy Spirit prays. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes his intercessions with groanings that cannot be uttered. I want you to know something. You have an intercessor, someone that is praying for you, things you don't even know need to be prayed about yet. It's the Holy Spirit. When you engage him in your life, he begins interceding for you. Number eight, the Holy Spirit fills, Acts 2, 8. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit fills. Look, that's Acts chapter 2, right? 
Look to Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. What? Acts 2, they were filled. Acts 4, they're empty? Acts 4, they need filled again? Yeah, that's what it says. Acts 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4, they needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit again. Why? Because we're leaky people. We just leak. People are grabbing at us, pulling at us. The world is attacking us. The world is drawing from us and taking from us. And God says, you've got to continually be filled. That word filled means a continual filling. It's a constant pouring in of the Holy Spirit in our lives that causes us to overflow with love. Every time you wake up every morning, you need to engage the Holy Spirit in your life. Why? Because he constantly wants to fill our lives. This is better than, I mean, some of you look at me like you're mad at me right now. I'm not your enemy. I want, you, I want you to get this in your life, to wake up with joy. Not wake up with Fox and CNN. Not wake up with Wink News. I mean, it's all garbage. Just get the word of God in your life. Wake up with the joy of the Lord. Get out of bed and jump every now and then. Clap your hands in your home. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That's not a Sunday morning thing. Number nine, the Holy Spirit teaches us. He's the helper. I'm not being judgmental to you. If you're not engaged in this kind of a lifestyle, I get it. I understand it. I lived that for most of my teenage years. But there was a point in my life where I realized I didn't have to go up there and beg God to fill me with the Holy Spirit, that I could engage with him and say, I just want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and I began to receive my prayer language and pray in my heavenly prayer language. He said, well, isn't that fake? No, I died. The old Greg died and was buried in a watery grave. And I stood up new and said, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And now my desires are his desires. And any time they're not, the Holy Spirit convicts me and I get rid of them. The Holy Spirit teaches us. When the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I've said to you. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. You have somebody to help you read the Bible. I guarantee if I ask all this congregation in here right now, how many of you have a hard time reading the Bible? Over half of the people in this room would lift their hands and say, I really have a hard time with it. And I'm telling you why. You're trying to read it with head knowledge, and you cannot get it. You can't get the Word of God without the Spirit of God revealing it to you. So you have to engage Him. You have to talk to Him. You, ha- you can't ignore him anymore. You can't say, well, that's just for back then. You know, that's, that's all passed away. You know, that was all with the old covenant. Somebody taught you that, and it's not true. Well, that's just, you know, when the disciples passed away, that all passed away. No, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, and he talks about wisdom and knowledge and, and tongues being passed away, you say, well, why did they just grab tongues? Because we know wisdom ha- and knowledge hasn't decreased. They just say all that passed away. I'm here to tell you that's not the truth. Knowledge is increasing. Love is increasing. The spirit of the living God, the power of God on the earth is increasing. And we're about to see a revival. Amen. Number 10, I'm trying to get through it. The Holy Spirit counsels and guides. Counsels and guides. Some of you are paying $100 a week to go meet with a counselor. You're missing it. Some of you need to go give $100 a week to a counselor. Until you understand, this is the answer. (laughs) This is the answer. John 16, 13, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. He is the mentor. He is the wise mentor. I've had great mentors in my life, and I just said a few minutes ago, Pastor Kathan is one of my spiritual mentors that has spoken more truth to me than anybody, but let me tell you something. I can't depend on his wisdom. He gets it from him, and I have the authority to get it from him, too. I need to learn from him where he gets it from so that when he speaks to me, I go to the Father and get the wisdom because the Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom. So good. I'm liking this myself. (laughs) Number 11, the Holy Spirit empowers us, and he strengthens us. But Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Be my witnesses. Uh, be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. This is what we're called to do, church. And this is the key, the key is the Holy Spirit. 
the source of our power, the source of signs and wonders, the source of miracles is the Holy Spirit who always points us to Jesus. So in essence, it's all about Jesus all the time. All the time. He is the, listen, we are saved by grace through faith, nothing else. That's it. Faith in Jesus. He, it's not what saves us, it's who saves us. Come on. Well, what about this? And what about that? And what about, no, it's what? It's who? It's Jesus. Jesus and him alone. The Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. Number 12, last one. The Holy Spirit transforms us. We all need transformed into his image. We all need God to transform our lives, that old things pass away, everything becomes new. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, Miss Gail, if you could come to the keyboard. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through, this, through his spirit who dwells in you. How many know what the requirements for baptism in the Holy Spirit is? There's one requirement for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know what it is? Salvation. Salvation. No others. There's no hoops to jump through. You don't get, got to get your life perfect. You don't have to get everything, all your ducks in a row. Riley didn't have to get her ducks in a row. She's still got a little attitude. I got I to gotta straighten her out every now and then. She's got issues just like all of us do. You got issues, Rich. I've seen some of your issues. You got issues. God's not afraid of your issues. God loves you. God says, look, you don't have to do any of that. The only requirement to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to receive salvation. And once you receive salvation, you are a candidate to be baptized and filled, submerged in, overflowing out of you, a river of living water. It's available. If all these characteristics that I just read to you all through the Bible all point to what the Holy Spirit does in our lives, how can you live without him? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. It's so simple and it's so pure. It's like I used, to go, I used to go and pray, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and sit up there at the altar for hours, hours, begging God to fill me with the Holy Spirit until I couldn't speak anymore, and I was going, Ooh. they're like, that's it, that's it. I'm like, what is it? I don't know. Let go. I'm letting go. I'm holding on. I don't know what to do. I'm doing everything, trying to receive Mark, when all of a sudden, it just clicked by the Holy Spirit's revelation. You don't have to beg me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You didn't beg God to save you. You said, God, here I am, a sinner, I need you, and he didn't need you to do a whole bunch of stuff. Just confess me as Lord. Just give up, or ask, repent of your sins, and follow me. That's it. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, Rich, it's the same thing. It's just going to the altar, say, God, or right there in your home, or in your car, or in your bedroom. It's just saying, Jesus, I received the knowledge of the Holy Spirit today, and I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I receive it right now. I receive my prayer language, and therefore, I pray in the Spirit. I can't tell you what to pray. I can't tell you what to say. But I'm telling you, if you'd be that honest and that transparent with God, you'll hear a sound in your belly. And just say it. If it's one word, if it's two words, if it's a whole sentence, you just pray it. You say, well, that sounds silly. Well, whoever said it wasn't going to sound silly? It's a, it's a heavenly language. I'm just telling you. It's available. There's one requirement to be being filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's salvation. Everybody stand up on your feet. Ephesians 5.18 says, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Years ago, my father was in his uh, mid-70s, and uh, Uncle Rick and I took my father to India on a mission trip. And we went to India, and we were, we were in our hotel room, and it was early in the morning. It had just become daylight. It was maybe 4 o'clock in the morning. It was getting light in India, and uh, I was sleeping so good, and I felt somebody over top of me. I can't explain it. My dad, can I borrow you? My dad, about your age, got over top of me. I'm sleeping, and he's looking at me this close. He's like that. Open my eyes, and there's my dad right in front of my face. I'm like, Dad, are you okay? Are you okay? He said, Son, they're waiting on us. I said, What, Dad? He said, They're waiting on us. They're, 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 those people out there don't know Jesus, and they're waiting on us to go tell them about Jesus. 
I said, Dad, but we don't have an interpreter. They're not going to understand our language. We've got to wait. The interpreters are coming. Then we'll go out there and we'll tell them about Jesus. He said, son, if we just go stand there, people will come up to us and want to know about Jesus. We'll be able to tell them. I just took him and said, let's go. Can you imagine that every morning, Mark, the Holy Spirit's just hovering over you? Come on, man, talk to me. Talk to me. I'm right here. They're waiting on us. Let's go, let's go out there. Let's go out there and find somebody limping and just lay hands on that leg and tell them they can be healed. Let's just go out there and tell somebody that Jesus loves them. Let's go out there and find somebody that feels like today my life is over. I'm going to end my life. But no, God said, if you'll wake up with me, I'll direct you. I'll guide you and I'll teach you what to say. Let's just go find them and tell them God loves them and watch what God will do. This is the kingdom. Acknowledge him. He's here. He's waiting on you and I to engage him in our lives and submerge ourselves in him. Everybody lift your hands to the Lord all over the room. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you right now. Come on. Just ask him. Holy Spirit, fill me right now. If you're watching online, would you just stand up on your feet in your living room and lift your hands to God and say, Holy Spirit, right here in my living room, would you fill me? If you're watching a replay of this and you're in your car or wherever, would you just ask, Holy Spirit, refill me right now. Just baptize me fresh and anew with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask everybody, this is just for you, please. This isn't for your neighbor right now. This is just for you. Would you right now begin to pray in the Spirit? Come on, just pray in the Spirit. Come on, some of you that haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, would you just open your mouth and pray the one syllable that you hear in your belly, the one sound from within you, the sound that is in your belly, in your spirit, man. Cry out with a holy, heavenly language. Right now, Holy Spirit, baptize fresh and anew. Oh, try it. Just do it. Say, Holy Spirit, I give myself to you. All of you, none of me. Come on. He's filling right now. He's filling right now. Some of you right now are receiving an infilling of the Holy You're in Acts 4 now. You had it in Acts 2. You're in Acts 4 right now. And God's refilling you. He's baptizing you fresh and new with vision and purpose. He's giving gifts and he's laying, laying in you a, a commission to walk with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.